Hello, everybody. I hope you all are doing well. And again, I want to encourage my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and also wish everyone a happy new year. May God bless you and your families as you head into 2023. You know, talking about going to the new year, you know, I just want to encourage everybody to wait on God, to trust in his timing as we enter this new year. I know many of us have been tempted to be impatient with God's timing. You know, you're waiting on God. You ask God for certain things. And sometimes it feels like he doesn't even care, but he does care. And he has a plan for you and his timing is perfect. You know, so that's the main thing I want to address because I know waiting on God is very difficult for most people. And I would say a lot of our Christian life, if not most of it, is waiting on God. And also during that waiting time, we might be tempted to question his wisdom. And we might be even brought to the point of thinking that he left us. You haven't experienced God for so long. You haven't seen him move. Your life has been the same for so long. You wondered that I do something wrong for God to leave me because I don't sense him at all. And so I want to encourage you to not be impatient with God, but to be patient because you trust in him because you know that he knows what's best for you and to trust in his wisdom and to know that he's never left you and he never will because once you belong to him you're his forever so i want to talk about an example of how god led his people in the old testament after the israelites came out of egypt out of pharaoh's grasp and moses is leading them and god is leading all of them there's an example in numbers chapter 9 verse 19 to 23 God led his people with a cloud and God would use this cloud to move and the Israelites will follow it. And when the cloud stayed, the Israelites will camp around it. And so I think we can learn a lot from this because our God is the same at that, as time, at that time as he is today. And I want you to just keep in mind just how God works, you know, in this passage and how God may be working in your life at this time. Verse 19, when the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with, in, with, in accordance with his command through Moses. And so as you can see here, it wasn't a simple, methodical journey. The cloud didn't just stay in the tabernacle during the night and it traveled during the day. You know, it wasn't something that people could predict. And so this cloud that God used sometimes stayed only half a day and then it would go off. And sometimes it would just stay there as long as a year, maybe even more than a year. But it says that it would stay even a year. And so I could imagine those some people just wanted to get moving, progress. Let's get to the destination and hear God has this cloud just stay for an entire year of going nowhere. And so God still does that in our lives, I believe. And the thing is, that's what's best for us. That is what was best for the Israelites. His timing is perfect. During those times of waiting on God to move, he is teaching us and equipping us so that we can successfully make the next journey. And so some of us may be waiting on God for all sorts of things. You want things change in your life and you don't see that cloud moving and we don't physically see a cloud ourselves today right you know of course most of us but today i believe god works by opening doors and closing doors for example he could move in many different ways but that's just one way that i've seen god work in my life and others when god moves and tells us to follow he'll close doors and open doors that are obvious. He guides us and instructs us, not with confusion, but with clarity. 
And so just as that cloud was very clear and moving from one place to the other, he will instruct us clearly on what we should do in our lives. And so during the time of waiting, we have to be patient and trust in God. I think a lot of people make huge mistakes when they don't wait on God and they just move forward on their own. Maybe they want to do like a major milestone change in their life. And they know that it's not the right time that God hasn't opened that door, but they force that door open and they often regret it. But by the grace of God, some of us can't even break through the door and we're just forced to wait. Maybe the mental affliction is not going no matter what we do, no matter what we try. Maybe we just can't find that spouse at this time. We're in a season of singlehood and you know that God has not, you believe that God has not called you to be single forever. And so you're saying, when Lord, but this is not the time to force your way, but to wait on God for God to bring you that right person at the right time. And so this is a good example, I believe, of how God leads us. Notice that, and it doesn't say anywhere in the scripture that when God would have that cloud rest somewhere, he didn't provide them a heads up. We'll be staying here for 10 days or 60 days. He just does what he wants. He rests in the place that he wants and he leaves to another place when he wants. He doesn't provide an explanation. Look, we're going to move from here to here at this time because there's this huge storm coming and you will be, you know, uh, going through a really tough time if you had to go at this time or there's these um, evil people coming through. He doesn't provide any ex explanation, but he just wants you to trust in him. He wanted the Israelites to just trust in him. He wants us to know that he's the shepherd and we're the sheep. And we don't need to figure out why he did that. Oh, God's doing that because if I did this, I would have got hurt or this is, you don't have to worry about it. He has the perfect timing and plan for your life. And so you just, just trust in him. And so what did those Israelites do? For like, let's say when they were just encamped for a year, were they praying to God, please go, let us go tomorrow, please. And he doesn't go tomorrow and they get disappointed. No, they shouldn't do that. Neither should you. You should patiently wait on God. And you should do what you know God wants you to do at this time, which is walk with him, to love him and to love others, serve others at this time. You don't just sit around doing nothing, but you prepare yourself. And it's kind of like um, what Tim Tebow said, you know, I enjoy listening to his talks uh, as a former NFL player. He said, when people are waiting on God to bring them the spouse, instead of just waiting around doing nothing, they get to know God. They prepare themselves. They do God's work. And the process, they're growing. And then when they get a spouse, it makes them that much stronger. Instead of just waiting around doing nothing, I think that's the right attitude. When we're waiting on God, it doesn't mean we're doing nothing but we're doing what we believe God wants us to do and we'll continue to grow trusting in him. And so waiting on God is a large part of the Christian life and we just need to get used to it because we'd be worse off not waiting and just busting through with our own plan in our timing. And so really there's no reason to be impatient with God, but there's all the reason to patiently wait on God to open and close doors in our lives so that we may walk in the path that he laid out for us, which is what is best for us. And also questioning God's wisdom, his ways and timing is just in our best interest not to. You might have that temptation, but just realize God knows better. It's that simple. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts than ours. It's just better. You don't have to even go there. You don't have to question him because he's God and we're not. He's the shepherd. We are the sheep. And so it's actually a burden that gets lifted off. You humble yourself and say, God, I love you and I trust you. Let your will be done and leave it at that. And I know some of you, including myself, you know, I've seen God work powerfully around me and in my life. And there'll be times where it's just dry nothing. I see nothing. I feel nothing. And so I had this temptation that gets presented to me. Did you mess up? Did God leave you because of that sin or because you didn't do enough or whatever reason? And we have to remember the promises of God in Hebrews 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. Once we become his child, the Holy Spirit is a seal for us. It's a guarantee for the day of redemption. We are his forever. And no, just because he's been quiet and you haven't felt or seen him does not mean he's left you. He is certainly with you. So don't, don't even fall for that trick a little bit. It's just nonsense. And so I encourage you as you go into this new year to make up your mind, to be patient with God's timing, to trust in his timing and his ways, and to trust in his wisdom on what he has in store for you, his plan. And so like the cloud, just getting up and moving out, being so straightforward, so is God guiding us. When he wants us to stay and grow here, you accept it and you grow, you grow. You love God, you love others, serve others where you are at this time. And at the right time, he'll guide you to something else. I mean, you'll be doing that the whole time, loving God and loving others, but he'll change, you know, change you, move you from this season to that season. And so if you are in a season of mental affliction, you know, in other words, a time of growth and training, that season will end at the right time and God will move you to the next season. So may God bless you this upcoming year, you and your family, and may we all wait on the Lord, trusting in him alone. God bless you.